Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Network One on One, the podcast where we connect extraordinary individuals from various fields. Today we have a special treat for you. I've been trying to get these two together for months. Allow me to introduce our audience to Ramiro Guerra and Ivan Sanchez Lucas, both esteemed restaurateurs and chefs in the North County of San Diego. Surprisingly, they had never crossed paths until now. So I introduced them to each other just before the show. They immediately hit it off. In their conversation today, they share their personal experiences, challenges, and triumphs in the restaurant business. If you've ever had questions about your restaurant experience, listen to these two talk about their thought process behind the scenes. I believe that we can expect exciting collaborations between them in the future. Stay tuned for a captivating dialogue that explores the artistry and camaraderie between the culinary world and you at home. Another successful introduction. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Network One on One. Do you want to start or should I start? You start. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. So my name is Ivan Lucas. Um, actually, Ivan Sanchez Lucas. So my wife and my kids always give me a hard time for just using Lucas because the <laughs> girls are registered under Sanchez, especially Scarlett. She's uh, the baby one. Uh, occupation. I've been in the restaurant industry for 26 years. Restaurant tour. It's a hard word for me to say. Um, name of business. Uh I had Madera Kitchen of Mexico, recently closed down, currently working for Terry Inc. Uh, it's a great organization. I've been in the industry for 26 years, roughly. So, give and take, yeah. My name is Ramiro Guerra. I'm executive chef and uh, managing partner for the Lab Collaborative in Oceanside, a mission in Cleveland down by the beach. Been there, um, been there two years, helped build with pull out the tools and build all the, the restaurant out. And uh, so we've been open a year and eight months. Um, I've been doing this for I think 25 years, about 25 years. Uh, this one, this one's an easy one. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it was, uh, it was interesting growing up in uh, North County, right? I grew up in Encinitas. It oh, was yeah. back in the nineties. It was, it was a lot of fun. Right, like Beach Town, like literally, and uh, Vulcan and Coast Highway 101. So okay. it, was, it was super, super cool. Yeah, yeah, like paradise, you know, is the best way to describe it. Um, I just wish I could have learned to surf. You know, I had a buddy that he was a great surfer, you know, so. Uh, but it was amazing. It's amazing growing up in Encinitas. Uh, yeah. If I could afford it, I would go back and live there. Right. Yeah. That was a good time to be back there, too. Yeah, it was great. It was great. I grew up in Oceanside and Vista. Um, lived in... Grew up in Fire Mountain till fifth grade, and then moved to Vista. Um, same man, I loved loved growing up in North County in general. It was cool. Um, I did surf, a lot of surfing, a lot of skating. More skating when I got to Vista, and got away from the beach a little bit. But when I first moved, ended up taking the bus a lot down to down to the pier and still surfing and. Uh, and skated all over Vista. It's, you know, it's small yet big. Um, just great, great memories of, of growing up. Nice. Uh, the most influential in teaching about food. Um, it's, it's crazy. Uh, when I first started in the restaurant industry, you know, it was supposed to be a summer job. I came across this place called Big Daddy's Roadhouse back in Lucadia. I met uh, Chef Steve Newman, which uh, I, I want to look for him and reach out and see where he's at right now. Uh, he was from New York, right? So he had a great culinary background, but he started working for a Big Daddy's Roadhouse, right? So it's very different than he, what he was used to. Mm -hmm. But he would make some unreal dishes, you know, like, I mean, he had the uh, French culinary background. I was super impressed back then, and I didn't really know anything about food. I was like 15, 16 at the time, so, but... 
he was amazing in his field. The way that he would create sauces, you know, dishes, presentations, flavors. It was, it was something else. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think there was anybody in particular that influenced me. I, I definitely, once I got a taste of being in the kitchen, and this was, you know, back when I first started and I was at Chili's and I wanted more hours. So they're like, hey, you want to try and cook? Like, yeah, all right, I'll try it. Man, just instantly fell in love with it. Back then, they used to do a lot of scratch cooking there. So it was kind of cool. So I learned a little bit and then kind of figured out that this is what I wanted to do. And then took it to the next level, self-educating until um, I went to culinary school. But, you know, it was Food Network years, too. So yeah. that that was very big influence is watching these guys on TV do all this stuff with food. So it's probably where I got started. That's very cool. What is the favorite cuisine to cook? Uh, I just, for me, it's simple, basic, you know. I like, uh, I like a nice burger. You know, I think uh, you don't need much. You know, it's really, really simple. All you need is some salt, pepper, you know, cook it at the right temperature. Some nice cheese melted on the bad boy. Good bun. I mean, traditional fixings. And a steak. You know, I'm a carnivore, so I think you can't really mess those up, right? You really uh, can't. I mean, with yeah, within reason, you know, but I think uh, once you know, like, enough about beef and steak, certain cuts, you know, I mean, I think you could do a really good job. You know, you don't need much experience, not like treating a fish or something else, right? That's right. more delicate. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, a nice burger, like, it's, it's just it's my go-to. I'm a, I'm a casual dining chef for sure. I love to just approachable food, but scratch, all scratch. I don't like to buy any pre-made anything except for baked goods because I'm not a baker. As, I don't know about you, but you know most chefs I know can't bake and yeah. most bakers can't cook. So it's, uh, I'm definitely not a baker, but yeah, that's casual dining. Yeah, you know, like I said, burgers. We just got a, for Taste of North County, silver medal in our burger. Oh, nice. And our Great. wings, yeah. So That's, that's awesome. Pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, this one's interesting. <laughs> Food trends. I think the ones that excite me the most are, I feel like nowadays, chefs are coming up with dishes that represent an ethnic culture but with ingredients that come from just about any part of the world, right? Uh, one of the, uh, I had the pleasure to work with uh, celebrity chef Angelo Sosa. He opened up Death by Tequila, that's where I first met him. And it was like Spanish or Mexican type of theme uh, cuisine. He made a tostada for me. It tasted like a Mexican tostada, like, but it didn't have all of the ingredients from like Mexico, right? That you would think. Like this is this is what a Mexican tostada would taste like, uh, but it was just it was delicious, you know. And I've gone to a few restaurants where there's just this infusion of uh, cuisines, you know, like they're making a taco, but they're using a bincho technique, you know, to cook the fish, and just the flavors are unreal, you know. They're taking something that's original and combining it with something from a different place of the world, it comes together, and it's just I think it's amazing, you know. I think. Uh, we keep on growing on that too. It also helps culturally, you know, for people to come together, you know, more, more than ever before. Um, the one that I'm, is my least favorite as far as trends, it's the, the vegan movement, you know, I feel like it's really, really hard, you know, with the it's, vegan movement. I feel like you either have to be a hundred percent vegan type of uh, restaurant, you know, themed, uh, but you can't fully have like vegan items and then proteins, you know, like beef and that kind of stuff, you know, for a few different reasons, you know, vegans tend not to like the smell of like proteins at times. I think it's just kind of tricky. That and also the organic movement, I think it's a little tricky as well. I mean, as much as somebody wants to just go full organic, it's it's relatively hard, you know, in my experience. It's unrealistic. Um, There's a lot of gray area in it too. It is. is it is. is. Absurd. Well, not only that, but I feel like since the beginning of the time, that's how our ancestors used to be, you know, organic. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we kind of went away yeah. from that. Yeah, right. We ruined it. Now we're trying to go back. <laughs> now we're going back. <laughs> so that's, I think those are the only two. I mean, I, I like them, you know, don't get me wrong. Like I really, really like them. Uh, I wish I could be a vegan, but I like steaks so much, you know, that I, I, I couldn't. Yeah. I mean, I know it's kind of like the healthier options, you know, and uh, it makes a lot of sense. 
but it's just it's just a very very tough market i believe in my opinion so you know i don't know what excites me besides like figuring out new ways of of creating same flavors different ingredients kind of, kind of like what you were saying um i would love to dabble more in molecular gastronomy um haven't really found the time to to do much of it but i've been i got a lot of ideas i want to kind of try with that but like you i I like going modern cuisine modern techniques classic french techniques actually most techniques are chinese anyways but and then taking a dish that wouldn't fall into that realm and and using those techniques to get a a different outcome out of it um but yeah scratch i could care less about organic i i focus more on source i think if you know where it's coming from then you know what what the ground's like and what people are putting into the the product and so you can stamp an organic label on anything but if i'm not seeing it for myself as you know there's a lot of gray area with the organics i don't mess with that I agree with you. Vegan's t- tough. Unfortunately, it's a must. Uh, but people definitely, some people draw the line. So, and no, you serve meat. I'm not touching, even though you say it's vegan, I'm not going there. Yeah, that's to them. But uh, I was at a conference and there's veganism's up like 41% right now. Which is leading me to now, okay, I need to add another vegan dish to the menu because I want to make sure we capture that. Because, you know, if we're not selling food, we don't have a business. So, so got to do what the trends tell us to do. Yeah. Well, even with that, though, like for me, it's like growing up in the industry, I remember uh, I, I worked for Vigi Lucci's for 10 years. So that's kind of where I started with uh, my path and in, in growth in the industry. But I, at that time, at least in my opinion, I felt like restaurants were more steady, you know, in the type of cuisine. Yeah. I think it's over the last 10, maybe 15 years has been like more trend, right? And more new things coming up and then more businesses failing due to that because there's new demand and it's really, really hard to like keep up with demand, you know, like especially you have 41% increase in, in vegan, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's tough, yeah. I think, you know, it's very, very hard. But, um, but yeah, it's interesting how trends have been changing through for time now the challenge is cool i'm yeah. excited yeah, for, for sure. the challenge of doing some more vegan stuff i have a great friend chef um dave and wait and he has uh the plot okay and he does a lot of plant-based stuff and so his knowledge is guy's been a mad scientist for years playing with the the plant-based stuff so whenever i get a roadblock i always hit him up because makes sense you vegans out there Someone please explain to me the honey thing because I don't get it. I don't get why honey's not vegan. Yeah. <laughs> well, so some of the things for me, it's like the cheeses too, right? Yeah. So it's like root cheese that tastes like plastic-ish, you know, which, I mean, it doesn't taste bad, but it's just, I guess it's just that, like you, like you mentioned, you know, uh, to your point of like knowledge, right? I think it's when you have that knowledge, it's a lot easier, right, for you to be able to come up with new dishes and understand it better right? Yeah. versus when you don't. And w- yeah, if you're if you don't want meat, then why are we? Why is it in demand to have a, a plant based burger, or a plant based steak, or plant based chicken, or plant like yeah. just? So I I won't go down those roads. I just yeah. you know if we're gonna do a burger, I'm I'm gonna you know grill a portobello, or I'm gonna you know mill some wild rice and lentils and yeah. mix it to create some sort of texture, but. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a big fan of those yeah. those fake proteins that a vegan chicken uh, sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, saw, I don't think I've tried. I one saw yet. vegan chicken nuggets at the store. Did you? Just, oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit scared and skeptical, you know. So yeah, but I probably. I mean, some of them taste fine. That, that Beyond Beef and the Impossible. Yeah, those those do they do taste good, yeah. but I don't know. Too many vegans are like, oh, I want a burger. I'm gonna get this. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> This podcast is brought to you by YourInsurancePlace.com. Owning a business is hard work. You put your blood, sweat, and tears into it every single day. 
You need a partner who understands the ins and outs of insuring small to medium-sized businesses. For over 40 years, our California Property and Casualty Insurance Agency has insured businesses just like yours. We've seen it all and we've learned a thing or two about what it takes to keep your business protected. That's why we offer free policy assessments. We'll take a look at your policy and let you know if there are any gaps in your coverage. Let us help you to protect what you've worked so hard to build. Yourinsuranceplace.com The Film Hub is the future of co-working in downtown Vista. Get energized in an inspiring work environment that is built for your success. With multiple membership options for workspace and private offices, you can become a part of our co-working community. The Film Hub makes it easier to produce the professional content your business needs. From video production, live streams, photo shoots, or in-person events, you can create all this and more in our audio and video facilities. Love your work and where you accomplish it. The Film Hub. Uh, what are the most important factors to understanding restaurant entrepreneurship? Oh, that's... I just, I just learned that <laughs> and I, I still need to learn some more. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's, for me, it was just more about accomplishing, you know, something that I feel not every individual is up for a task such as that. Right. And it's owning your own business. It's uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, I've worked for other people that have their businesses, their restaurants, and they're successful. And I've always brought out to them, you know, it's like at some point in my life, I want to have my own business, my own restaurant. Like I love the industry. It's essentially what I know how to do. Uh, I've been doing it for so many years and I just want to give it a shot. They would always tell me it's a lot of work, you know, a lot of work. And in my mind, I was like, yeah, I know it's a lot of work. I've been doing it for so many years, you know, but they're like, no, it's different. You know, you're, you're managing, you're only doing half. Yeah. It's like you have your schedule. It's yeah, exactly. But at the time too, it's, uh, I feel like, when you are not in those shoes, it's really, really hard for you to really comprehend like what it really takes, right? right? From ground zero. You know, there's a lot of people that have opened restaurants, you know, but it's not their restaurant and it's not their capital, right? Or it's not their loan. So it's a lot easier when you're opening up a restaurant for somebody that has the backing, you know, the financial backing is so much easier. Absolutely. All you have to worry about is you show up, you hire people, you train, you set up structures and, and you're good. But when you have to start from ground zero, it's like you literally have to do everything, right? And especially if you don't have the knowledge, you have to acquire the knowledge in order for you to move to the next steps, you know, and follow those steps. Um, but for me, it was just, I just want to have my business. I want to see what it's like. And most importantly, I want to learn, you know? So, and that's exactly what happened. So we opened up our, our business. It, um, I learned about location and now I understand better location, right? So I was a little bit confused when I first started. You know, I've seen restaurants that have, the worst locations, you know, and they're successful. All right. But I also wasn't there at the beginning, you know, I don't know the struggles or how long it took them before they became what they, what they are today. Right. So I figured like, why not? Okay. We have an opportunity. Like literally they handed us the keys. So we didn't have to do much, you know, cause we were doing research. We wanted to be along uh, the coast where we, where I grew up, you know, we grew up in Encinitas or Carlsbad, uh, maybe not by the beach, but within a few miles, you know, reasonably, but everything was super expensive as far as the lease. So even as much as we wanted to be at a good location, it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't ideal for our resources. Uh, so that's one of the things that I learned. But even if the location is not the best, the the size of the location has a lot to do with it as well, right? So that's the other thing that I just, I just learned and I'm still learning uh, now with uh, working for Terry Inc., no, I'm still learning and it's, it's beautiful. You know, it's, uh, I keep surprising myself of like how much I did not know and how much I felt like I thought I knew, right? Uh, location, the size of it, you know, we started with 3,400 square feet. Uh, to me, it didn't seem like a big location, but I'm also came from a background of working at locations that were up to 5,000 square feet, 7,000 square feet. So for me, I'm like, okay, this is definitely doable. Uh, but again, like I didn't know what it would take or how long it would take, right? Uh, but now I learned it's, uh, you don't need a large scale, you know, you just have to do something small, something that makes sense, you know, from the lease amount to the lease term, uh, and make sure that you have either the right partners or you do the right things based on 
the failed project, which I don't see it as a failure. You know, it's just been a stepping stone. You know, it's just been one of those classes and courses that I took and I got a C instead of an A, but now I know how to get a B right. or an A. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been interesting. So besides uh, location and square footage uh, for the least amount, uh, the market, knowing the market, you know, talk about vegans and, and menus and trends, it's knowing the market. I went in with uh, a theme that when I started pondering about the theme, we didn't have anything like that here in San Diego. So I figured there's a market for it. No matter where we put it, there's going to be a market for it. But then Javier's came down and other Mexican restaurants, you know, that uh, similar to Javier's, different price points, you know, Red O's and, and those big companies. And now all of a sudden my theme is, in this, is great, you know, it's not as, uh, as, as hopping as it could have been, like if it would have been done like 15, 20 years ago. Uh, so that's the other thing, you know, is the theme and knowing the market price points, you know, um, it doesn't matter if you want to offer like the best of the best, but if the market doesn't understand it, nor do they want it, then you can't have a business, you know, they're not going to come through your doors and spend, even if you're selling a Wagyu beef, if it's not the right place, it's not the right place. You know, people are not going to come in and, and understand it. So there's, there's a lot that I learned a lot, a lot that I learned along yeah. with accounting which uh luckily i love i love numbers so that helped out a lot but it's yeah (laughs) but it's it's a lot of work it's a lot of tedious work you know and again we go back to the resources so i learned about resources you need to have uh, the right resources or at least knowledge you know to be able to create those resources uh payroll i already been dealing with for a minute so that was relatively easy accounting was the hardest um and then more than anything is like time management as it really needs to be. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like I'm really good at it, but with this project, I'm like, okay, I can learn more. I can be better at yeah. it, you know? And that's, that's the thing. It's uh, having more of an open mind when it comes to the business. So I learned, I learned a good amount of. Yeah. I think it takes uh, an engineering type of brain to be 100%. really yes. good at it. Cause like you said, there's just, there's just so many factors, you know, an engineer takes everything around their, their surroundings and puts that into an equation to get the result they want. And that's being a, a restaurateur and in a, in a nutshell, I mean, you got size of the building, the size of your kitchen matters, depends on the size of your building, you know, down to the tables that you're using, the, the you know uh suppliers the the menu the demographic for your area like you you and i may go for some demographic that we're looking for um but they're not coming out and you know you can't take you can't take a uh idea or concept out of thin air anymore and just make it so you almost have to look at your community as a micro community. Okay. Well, at the end of the day, I need people to come back multiple times a week, multiple times a month, um, or I'm not going to make it. I can't pull from outside of my area, you know, more than 50% or, or it's just not going to work. And then, so then now you have to figure out what, okay, well, what does your community want? What are they, what are they doing? What are they eating? I, Love. I'm a big data guy, big number guy, analytics. I analyze everything. I love these POS systems now that they're just so analytical that you can dive down and get to the real heart of everything. Every, every, there's a reason for every dish that's sold or not sold. And you can pull it up on your, you know, on your computer and analyze it that way on top of the old school way that we know is just going out and talking to our guests and, you know, Hey, what'd you think? How'd you like it? Blah, blah, blah. Now we're starting to do some more collaborative with our guests now. So we're, we're going to be rolling out uh, an actual questionnaire with every special that we, we put out there, whether it's drink or, or food and get some real feedback. Some people just want to tell you, yeah, it's great. It's great. Love it. Blah, blah, blah. But you know, on paper, it might be a little bit different and you got to throw your humbleness uh, up to the front and uh, get rid of your, your ego and listen to what they want. And hopefully you can deliver and stay successful. 
Well, it's also better that way, I think, instead of them going through Yelp or some other site. Yeah. You know, you get the information there, you can actually do something about it versus... Don't get me started on Yelp, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's... <laughs> it's, uh, it's crazy. It's evil. It's, it's a needed evil, you know? <laughs> uh, is it easier or better to work with larger brands or local brands? Uh, I think uh, it's... For me, in my experience, I think it's relatively similar. You know, uh, I think uh, larger companies have more resources. You know, I got the chance to work for Rubio's. Uh, it was amazing. I just wish I'd pay more attention back then. I was younger. You know, I could have learned a lot more. But I did learn a good amount of information that they shared. Uh, but essentially, bigger companies have a structure. You know, they have anything from onboarding and bringing a team member, training, uh, basic legalities, breaks, and all that. Uh, and they have it laid out. I mean, they still have loopholes, you know, which is it, nobody's perfect. No company's perfect, I don't think. But they're, they're, they do relatively well. So in, in that sense, it's, uh, it's, it's easier. But on the same note, I, that for me, in my experience nowadays, working for someone local with uh, a good tenure and uh, enough backing, you know, it's also it's also fun. Yeah. You know, I am able to deliver what I've learned and help them grow, you know. So I think uh, for growth, it's it makes a lot more sense, you know. I think working with more local, smaller is definitely better. I think you can create a more of a partnership um and that's what i tell all my vendors that i work with and say you know you need me i need you we got to have a partnership it's so much easier to do with yeah with um local than big vendors or big restaurants it even that is is extremely hard you know my neighborhood restaurants if if I need cucumber, I can go ask any of these people. You go to, you know, a big chain restaurant and you're like, hey, can I borrow a cucumber? Like, oh, well, that's got to come out of my inventory. How do I get it? You know, like, oh, it's it got to get it back from you. We have to order it from this company, blah, blah. blah. Like, it's yeah. just a bunch of stuff. But, I mean, I worked for BJ's and Chili's. Um, so I have that corporate structure, yeah. which is awesome. And it's now being able to implement those corporate structures with the mom and pop feel in the family um, and marrying them together is, is been huge. It's been awesome because people want structure. Yeah. Team members want structure. They want to know that they're going to come in, they're going to get paid. They're going to, they know what they can and can't do, blah, blah, blah. So the structure is huge. And when you implement it and put it in place from the very beginning, you get pushback, but they end up, you know, falling in line and appreciating it more. Yeah. I've had, you know, lots of drag out arguments, of, you know, about doing the right thing. And, and at the end of the day, they always, you know, leave the day like, oh, you know, it was a great day. Thank you. Whatever. I mean, I, I literally have fired people and they thank me for firing them. Yeah. Because they're learning from it, you yeah. know, so... Well, it's, uh, if it's not done in that manner at times, it's a disservice, I think, both to the company and the individual. Yeah. You know, because not everybody's meant for the industry, I think, and not everybody fully understands. You know, I think uh, the only ones that do, like you mentioned earlier, before we started the, the conversation, was people that have a passion for it, right? People that have grown in the industry that understand it and that they enjoy what they're doing. You know, and I think that's... Uh, that's what measures success. You know, you have to really enjoy what you're doing and then keep at it, you know, for, for you to be able to be successful and learn and grow. I remind my guys, every one of my team members, I remind them, you know, okay, are you going to college? No. Do you have rich parents? No. Are you rich? No. Do you have a degree? No. I'm sorry. You, you may think this is like a transition career, but you're in a career now. And the sooner you treat it that way, the sooner you'll be successful whether it's here or going somewhere else when the opportunity is right. But people look at the restaurant as like a stepping stone to their, their future and their, their other career, which is, you know, very accurate if you're actually working on something and going to school. But if you're not, then, then this is your career own it. Well, and it's a great career. Yeah. I think, I think that's the thing too. A lot of people don't fully see the restaurant as being 
a career or an option for a career. You know, for me, I, I stumbled upon it and I learned and I appreciate it and, and I continue to learn and it's given me back a lot. So I, I understand it as best I can and I'm grateful for it you now, but I feel like there's a lot of people that don't realize that you can actually make a career in this industry. Yeah. You know, you don't always have to just stay as a uh, entry level, whatever position you came, you came on board with, you know, it's, you can grow, you can learn. And it's just like anything else. I mean, you go to school and you pay for a four year degree and then you go and you do it. Essentially the same thing. The only difference is you're getting paid to learn. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. It's not an easy career, but no. it is a career. Yeah. And it could be fun. It yeah. could be fun. What weighs most heavily in the difficulty of keeping your business alive versus letting it go? Uh, it's, uh, I think it's, it's more of options and choices than anything else, at least in my point of view. Uh, for me, uh, closing Madera was a bittersweet uh, time, but it, it, it was a stepping stone, right? So that's, that's the way I saw it. Um, we were actually doing rel relatively well through the last few months, but the lease came up, you know, and I just, I did a pros and cons evaluation, location, size, market, the lease, uh, partnership and so on, you know, and, and family, you know, and, uh, just the time spent in the, in the restaurant, you know, as I'm sure, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of hours, a lot of days, a lot of sweat and sometimes tears. Uh, but it just made sense. It just made sense. Uh, I figured uh, this is, again, the stepping stone. I learned uh, a vast amount, you know, and it's going to help me for, for the future. You know, uh, it's helping me right now with Terry Inc. And depending on how it goes with Terry Inc., I mean, within the next year or two, I would definitely give it another shot. You know, now with the information, try for B, you know, and then depending on how it goes, eventually try for C. It's just, it's one of those things that I feel uh, growing up and the way that uh, my upbringing was as a kid, it's, it's just being resilient, you know, and learning and it, things that seem to be bad are not necessarily bad, you know, case in point to your point of uh, letting somebody go, just is the right thing to do. You know, it's just the right thing to do. It feels like it's the right thing to do and and not holding on to some, something that can potentially lead into more headaches or more stress or uh, a bad relationship at the at home. Uh, so for me, it just made perfect sense. I've learned what I needed to learn for the time being. Uh, it's setting me up for success for the new ventures. And this has just been great. It's just been great. I had a lot of great moments. You know, I learned about dealing with partnerships and agreements and, and a lot of the fun stuff. But at the end of the day, it just really made sense, you know, overall. Yeah. For me, it's, hundred percent analytics. So I was saying earlier that what they've developed with these point of sale systems is so, so good. And we use toast. So I always tell everyone this, well, toast doesn't have an opinion. Mm -hmm. It's straight data. It's black and white. There's no, there's no gray area. So you really have to use that as your, your baseline, as you know, profit margin in restaurants isn't, isn't great at all. Actually, it's pretty ridiculous. And for how hard we work, especially right now with yeah. like the cost of goods skyrocketing. Yeah. yeah it's Avocado. brutal. Avocados just went from like 40 bucks a case to like almost 80. It's yeah. crazy. And God forbid what pork chops are going to be in the next couple of months. Right. There's um, like uh proposition 11 or yeah, prop 12. Yeah. Or prop 12. Yeah. yeah. It's absurd. It's, but yeah, I think you, you, you have to take your ego out of it and you have to look at your analytics and look at your numbers and is it is it worth it or not? Is your quality of life there? You know, as a parent too, you know, if you're not giving your kids the best version of you, then you're not helping them at all. And if the you can't get the best version of you because of this business and you know, a lot, a lot of people stay open because they're just ashamed to admit, you know what, we made a few mistakes. It didn't work out. Location yeah. doesn't mean that we're failures or we don't know what we're doing. It just means in that particular instance, it, it just didn't work out and, yeah. and that's okay. It happens all the time and you have to, you know, juggle relationships and compromise and, 
costs and you know your family and it's just it's bananas but um i think most people that i don't know anybody that's actually closed a restaurant and didn't open another restaurant that didn't do better yeah you know so you kind of learn you know failure leads to success um i don't i don't think it's failure but it is you know you learn from it. Yeah. If you don't learn from it, yeah, you, you'll open and close a lot of restaurants. <laughs> yeah, that, that could happen as well for sure, right? <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Hi, I'm Rachel Belt, host of Velocity, the Vista Chamber podcast. Join me as I sit down with Vista's movers, shakers, and change makers. Let's move Vista forward with Velocity. Hello, friends. I'm Joe Samo. I'm an attorney in San Diego, and I'm the host of Run It By My Lawyer. It's a great podcast where you will learn a lot about the law, and it is very entertaining if I say so myself. And uh, you could get it for free anywhere you get your podcasts, and you could follow us on Instagram at Run It By My Lawyer. Terry. Terry is, uh, is awesome. Uh, I've been with Terry going on three months now. Uh, I've learned uh, I've learned a lot in the last few months with them. I'm still learning. So they are uh, a great organization. They've been around for 43 years. So they've been serving a unique community. So they, they cater to adults with uh, disabilities. And I think it's it's amazing, you know. Uh, the other thing that I learned about myself through uh, Madera and just in general, since I can remember since I was a kid, uh, patience, you know, I've never had any, any room for patience. <laughs> I want things and I want them now, you know, and it's, it drives me crazy when I can't do it, you know, for whatever reason, whatever obstacle comes my way. And, and I just can't uh, do things fast enough. It drives me insane. But with Terry now, it's, I think that's going to help me a lot and talk about stepping stones and learning. Uh, my dad, I don't see like a failure. I'm going to use a car analogy because I love cars. Uh, I think it's just like a flat tire, you know, you're driving, you're doing well, you know, get a flat tire, uh, just stall for a minute. You know, you have to figure out how to change it, what you need to do to replace it. You replace it and you move on. Um, so I think that's just what it is. You know, it's just, uh, it's just a hiccup. Um, it's it's a big hiccup. There's there's a lot that uh, I need to button up and take care of. But even that, it's gonna be fun because I'm gonna be learning a lot. Uh, but going back to Terry, it's uh, it's teaching me patience, you know, and it's it's humbling me as well. You know, we see ourselves, or at least I see myself uh, through my perception of who I am and what I do and uh, my problems, right, and what I'm going through with the closure of this business, and then I get to see individuals that don't even have what I have, right, and it's 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 just eye-opening eye-opening it uh it's it's a different world it's a completely different world so it's beautiful what uh cheryl as the ceo and founder has done 43 years it's non-profit so between uh governmental agencies that help out assist and some clients you know the, they're, they're doing amazing yeah amazing. we buy our, our microgreens from terry oh nice okay um partner we've done a lot of um charity events with them you know, um, big, big fan of their organization and what they do. And obviously, you know, we get a ton of microgreens every week from, from Andrew. Okay. That's very so, cool. So, yeah. That's very, very cool. Yes. We just, uh, they just started with a farm within the, the campus. Yeah. It's a 20,000 acre campus. So there's a cafe, there is the farm and equestrian right so so far those are the 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 three uh segments that they've they built they're working on uh performing arts center should be done by november december this year uh the campus is going to be beautiful no it's going to be beautiful at some point they're pondering upon a full service restaurant uh but literally like talk about farm to table right there's a lot of uh restaurants that always have a disclaimer of farm to table, <laughs> you know, but literally it's like when you right. go to the campus, the farm's right there. So we're working on growing like produce and items that we can use for the cafe and eventually the restaurant. Uh, not to mention that they also uh, serve the 12 or 13 homes, right? So I think, I think it's just amazing, amazing. Uh, but it takes, it takes a village, you know, that's the other thing that I'm learning. It's, uh, it's, it's a 300, 300 uh, employees, I believe. You know, so yeah. everybody's playing uh, an important role in making this happen. And it's just, it's just beautiful. We'll have a farm to table. 
we're feeding uh, this uh, community, this unique community, and we can just uh, grow, you know, and learn. Yeah, I'm hoping to get, expand our profile with Terry. I gave Andrew a list of produce. I'd love to see him grow nice. for us. That's awesome. So hopefully that'll come into play. That's very awesome. Oh, what's next with the Lab Collaborative? Uh, just working on on refocusing our focus. That sounded really dumb, but <laughs> it makes sense, right? It makes sense. It we, makes perfect sense. I think we've we were we were so driven for growth that we were we we're trying to open up multiple locations and like get it going really fast. And we, we did have a really good um, structure, a really good team. And uh, so we thought we could kind of take on more and grow faster. Okay. Um, and that's all been a little flat tire, as you said. We got lost uh, one of our partners and his his wife had left us and you know they're they're focusing on family which is great yeah um, but that gives us an opportunity to kind of really look at what what are we what are we trying to accomplish um, the biggest thing we're trying to accomplish is being successful and and quality of life and for for everybody on our team so. So we focus on on building the restaurant, the individual restaurant, building sales. You know, we know where we we got to go, and we know what what areas and times and days of the week we need to work on. And um, you know, so we're, we're that's that's our big push right now is to really build that lunch business. You know, we're, we we have the location, so our location is phenomenal, um, and we get just so many tourists and we're on a wait all the time all you know outside of lunch we're pretty much on a wait every night for dinner um so it's great there's a great foundation and great structure to build on and now it's kind of diving into to things so working on just building that lunch business um we we're we've been lucky with with the success of the menu it's definitely people are digging it um people like it it's totally approachable like i said i'm you know, a casual cuisine guy it's um do what we can we're definitely trying to branch out we you know we we have some property in ramona that we want to do a farm at um our owner bought a place out there um 11 acres so he's going to build his new house and a small corner of it and the rest is going to be farm for for us and hopefully other locations and we'll get there. Um, we're just not in a big rush to get there. Uh, the, it, it, everything matters. So location cost of lease, all that stuff just is so, so crucial. Um, we get hit up a lot by a lot of restaurants that want to sell too. I'm like, Hey, are you guys, you know, doing a great job operating? We, you know, you guys be interested in buying us and, um, there's not too many places that that have meat left on the bone to to pick, you know. So it's really hard to, you know. Yeah, sorry, but we're not really interested. But right now, I'm I'm huge on. I'm tired. <laughs> Summer's just beating me up, so it's really about let's let's focus on a few things right now, and we'll we'll slowly expand and worry about other things, but. Yeah. It's going well, and my team's killer. Nice. I don't. I don't have to. I just went on vacation. Not one phone call. Not one worry. That's Literally nice. didn't worry about a thing, and that's very rare. Yeah. So. Well, that's that's when you know you got good people, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I got my my GM is him and I came up together at Chili's, you okay. know, twenty five years ago. Nice. Great friends, um, and then my kitchen manager. His also name is Ivan. He, uh, him and I, you know, started working at BJ's together like 10 or 12 years ago. So, and he's been with me ever since. That's very cool. So we have a huge foundation. We got a new gal, Michaela, who runs coffee and 
the coffee shop too. We have jet fuel coffee. Okay. And then she started working into managing shifts and she's just really bright and young, full of energy and uh sponge, which is awesome. Yeah. And we just promoted one of our bartenders to a bar manager. So they're uh getting their cutting their teeth and just open to whatever comes our way and that's kind of the way we look at it with the lab. We're just like, hey, we don't have rules. We have health health rules and tax rules. and But other than that, like, yeah. we can do whatever we want. And if it doesn't work, then we stop doing it and we try something else. So, Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I would give my address, but I don't know if that's uh, the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, on a serious note, um, I phone call a text an email i think you know i'm happy to give my phone number uh, i i love interacting with people in the industry like i said i just want to learn more i just want to grow um and i think it's fun well with that in mind uh people can reach me at uh, 760-812-9092 so you can also uh, reach us at terry campus of life and terry common grounds uh instagram and our uh, website as well um, I'm up for learning. I'm up for teaching. You know, whoever wants to learn a little bit that I know, I definitely <laughs> want to learn from from people. There's that, the uh, humbleness. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's crazy. You know, like the more I think about it, I see I see people. You know, and when I when I teach, like I have a good amount of information and knowledge, but there's always somebody above me that has even more. You know, it could be the fact that uh, age. You know, could be a factor. You know, they might be in the field for like. 35 years, you know, versus my 26 years, they might have five, 10, 15 restaurants, you know, they might have a bigger company. So, and the more I'm learning, you know, sometimes the less I understand, but the more I understand about the, the bigger image, you know, when it comes to uh, individuals and the knowledge and their background, you know, uh, when I work with Angelo uh, Sosa, it was, it was pretty humbling. You know, this guy is, uh, he's, he's very, very knowledgeable. You know, I mean, he's been on shows and he's been nominated for certain uh, cuisines, you know, and it's just, it was, it was an interesting experience. I, he definitely held me humble a bit. Um, I can be reached, um, our Instagram handles at TLC Oside. Um, you can email me, Chef Ramiro at TLC Oside. Um, pop down to the restaurant. We're at 201 North Cleveland Street. Suite 109 in Oceanside, half a block from the pier. Um, amazing, different atmosphere down there these days. But, um, and then, of course, we have our website, labcollaborative.com. Lots of good info on there. We're, I'm working on updates and changes to that, too, right now. So it's been uh, losing our partner was was uh, eye-opening here. You know, you think you're the one that does all the work and then tell you you're not the one that's doing all the yeah. work and then you're now it's all on you and it's it's you know, these guys work their butts off. So now I, now I have to step into that role and it's been a, a shift from kitchen to you know, kinda of running the whole show and um there I sleep better. It's My good. mind's empty by the time I go to bed, which is great. Yeah. Um but now I'm behind on creating a fall menu too, so I'm gonna put more pressure on myself here. <laughs> it's just uh, it's just the re re energizing, right? It's like the yeah. the focusing and that focus, right, that you brought up. So I suspect fall menu will be pretty cool. Nice. Now that I've had this step away from this for for a bit now, and getting back into it and dusting off my knife, and I think I'll I'll have some cool stuff to come up with. Awesome. Besides pork, you got to battle that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that I have more time, I want to stop by your place and, and check you guys out. Like yeah, Zeke's, uh, Zeke's been talking about you guys for a minute yeah. and how great you guys are doing and, and how amazing the food is. So Yeah, maybe we should do a collab thing with you and Terry. And, yeah, that'd um, be great. I know, Andrew, they're growing all kinds of stuff out there so we can yeah. you know, pull some products in and we can have fun. Yeah, definitely. Kitchen's beautiful. It's definitely. stunning. So. Yeah. You'd, you'd love it. Definitely. It'd be a fun, fun dinner to put on. Yeah. Sure. I know you're a wine guy too, so maybe uh, 
Yeah, we actually yeah. just uh, hosted the first wine dinner at Terry. Uh, we had 32 people. It was, uh, it was successful in my eyes, you know, for being the first one. Uh, we're working on the second one in September 30th. I'm also working uh, with a friend of mine who's got a pizza shop here. Uh, we're hosting a wine dinner on the 26th, so I'll see how it goes with two wine dinners. Uh, this wine dinner I'll be hosting myself, which I'm, I'm shy when it comes to speaking in public, you know, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs>